Now, two leading members of the Opposition National Democratic Congress, National Chairman Samuel Ofosu Ampofu and Deputy Communications Officer Kweku Boahin, have been granted bail by an Accra High Court. They have been charged for conspiracy to cause harm and assault on a public officer. The two pleaded not guilty to the charges and have been admitted to 100,000 cities plus one surety bail each. Now, let's first listen to member of the National Democratic Congress legal team, Victor Adaudu. The tape that we listen to, I don't think that um, that alone can secure conviction. I don't think so. That is why Chairman has always said that it is a doctored tape and he cannot speak to that tape until we know the day, the time, the venue when this was done and who recorded it. Then that is when we can move, we can clear that header. Now, let's also listen to the Deputy Attorney General, Joseph Benka, uh, who's been leading the prosecution to press charges against Ofosu Ampofo and Kwekubuahin. If the national chairman of the ruling party commits an offense, he ought to be tried. Simplicity. No one is about the law. And the Constitution itself is very clear on this matter. And so any person who falls foul of the law is made to face the law. If at the end of the day the court finds you guilty or acquits you, that's the decision of the court. For us, we are not judging any matter, and we will never judge any matter before the judge passes judgment, because we are not competent to pass judgment on anything. It is the judge, and we are going to ensure that anything that is done is in compliance with the laws of the land. Evidence of the case that we are going to actually adumbrate or adduce will prove whether or not he was in the meeting. And whatever alibi they want to file, we are not contesting anything. But when it comes, we shall mount a defense to that effect. All right, so we're going to stay a while longer on this subject. Uh, this is our main story for the day. Remember, we're streaming live on Facebook. My colleague, uh, Selam Amenya, uh, he's been monitoring the court proceedings this morning and joins us with further updates on this developing story. Uh, Selam, thank you very much for your time. First of all, what was the main argument put forward by the defense team? Well, the defense is saying, among other things, that um, the prosecution need to prove where this recording was actually done, the time, and specifically the venue. Their point is that, one, if it was recorded without the consent of the one who altered it or the one who was speaking, uh, it amounts to a breach of the law constitutionally. It is not right. And apart from that, if it was recorded in a private residence or where it was recorded, does it amount to a public place or a private place? If it is a private place, then it means that you invaded the privacy of that particular person. So can you now turn that in something that is unlawful? as evidence in court. Even though it was in the interest of the public? Yes, that, that's what it is. So mm. it, it's, it's going to be an interesting argument in court, mm. and I believe that this would kind of bring some finality to all these leaked tapes that we've been having. Mm. And what was the mood like in court today? Yes, in court it was very tense. The place was packed. As at 9 a.m., the court was full. You couldn't go in any longer. Uh, there were other cases that were supposed to be had, and all those people were standing outside. We had NDC bigwigs like uh, uh, the my, minority leader in parliament, Harina Idrusu, standing outside, Hannah Bisu, and a lot more of the people could not go inside. When you come down to the law con uh, court complex, that's the new law court complex, there were a lot of supporters there, and uh, the, the police were deployed from the uh, formed police in the FPU, mm. and we also some, saw others with a CID jacket as to whether they belong to the, SWAT, the famous SWAT team mm. or not. We couldn't tell, but security was very tight. Mm. And after proceedings, they kept the two accused persons up there for over 40 minutes. And the supporters were saying that they were not going to leave until they see that the two gentlemen are released and they've left the court premises. Mm. So they were We also understand that the former president, uh, John Mahama, was there in court today. Yes, he was, he was there as early as 8.30. He was seated in the court premises together with uh, uh, the, uh, his spokesperson, that is Madame uh, Joyce Bar, Joyce Bar Mukhtar. Mukhtar. We also uh, saw other bigwigs of the party. Uh, Johnson Asedin Kete was there. And uh, all other executives were there to throw their support behind uh, the, the two accused persons. And do we know if these two people have all met the bail conditions? Yes. Once, once they've been let out of the courtroom, I'm sure that uh, if they've not met, probably uh, they are almost done with uh, meeting the conditions. And do we um, also know when they're likely to return to yes, court? Yes, we, we are going back on the 6th of May mm. for hearing to continue. Mm. Uh, the, the Attorney General was there, right? The Attorney General was there, mm. but uh, she was not the one leading the prosecution. It was the Deputy AG, that is Joseph Pemka, who was leading mm. prosecution. All right, thank you.
Chalo Mamia is on the this morning. Uh, from the courts, as you can see, uh, the former uh, attorney to Dazi, attorney general, in short, uh, the deputy general Joseph Benka, uh, the chairman of the National Democratic Congress, uh, Ufusu Ampofu. Uh, they're uh, being uh, hailed by the supporters of the National Democratic Congress. Uh, we're told security was extremely tight this morning. Uh, former President uh, John Mahama was also there. Uh, you can see him in your shorts now. Uh, pretty much uh, interesting development in court today. Thank you very much, Salam, for, for joining us and for bringing us updates on this story.